So here we go. So welcome everyone to our June 2024 Mindfulness Refresher. And again, as you know, we do this monthly. Do want to also point out that this and other EFR uh, webinars that I do and that are offered by the program, there are others, they all qualify for a Know Your Numbers credit. So that's the personal choice activities. And um, all you have to do is uh, when you, if you put that in there, I think it's $100 per class. And you could take up to two of our classes for $200 uh, of credit. And you just put that in, it's a um, self-attesting kind of a thing on that Know Your Numbers platform. If you have any questions later, just, just let me know. So anyway, so welcome. Today, we're going to talk about our relationship to our thinking and how our thoughts can sometimes uh, pull us in lots of different directions mm -hmm. and sort of um, take control in a sense. Um, so moving on, get this. There we go. We're going to start with a mindful pause. Sure. We often do, and we'll do that right now. And so let's just simply notice um, what you're thinking about right now. Just turn your attention into that internal chatter in a sense. I'm going to mute everybody as we do that. So just pausing to notice what's going on in the mind. What do you notice? You might notice all sorts of things, perhaps something on your to-do list or what you're going to have for lunch or what you have to do later or lots of stuff. There's probably a number of things there. So all I want you to do is just observe. Don't have to do anything with them. You don't have to engage with any of those thoughts. Just be aware. Now, there may be associated things like emotions or body sensations that also pop up. Those are all are part of our landscape of awareness. Just noticing thoughts coming and going. See if you can just sort of step back from them. And be aware of them as they come into your field of awareness and then go. And then we're going to turn our attention to our breathing, just maybe taking a couple of nice, full, deeper breaths in through the nose, out through the nose or the mouth. Long, slow out breath. And again, filling and then out, releasing, just letting the breath be your anchor. And then also being aware of the body as it's sitting or whatever position you're in, just being aware of the body, its posture, how it's positioned. Using the breath in the body as an anchor to kind of like get out of the head into the body, feeling the breath. Way to kind of recenter and focus. And then maybe taking one last deep breath in. And as you breathe out, we'll finish this brief pause. Okay, so that's just a, a quick little pause. Um, it's sort of a variation of this um, three-minute breathing space, which we've done a number of times in different classes. But the three-minute breathing space, you kind of become aware of what's going on in the moment, kind of asking yourself, you know, how am I, what's happening right now, and noticing thoughts. That's one area that we zero in on, noticing thoughts, emotions, and body sensations, but with particular emphasis on thoughts. And uh, as I said, today we're going to be all about thoughts and our thinking and trying to use them in a way that gives us information and insight um, 
but getting back to the three minute breathing space, the rest of it is then gathering and redirecting our attention using the breath. So the breath is an anchor. Again, you can also use the body awareness and then um, pulling your attention um, away from the thinking into the body, into the breath, and then expanding your field of awareness um, around the breathing to include the whole body and then bringing that expanded awareness into the next activities of your day. So that's the three minute breathing space. It's a great exercise to do in response to something stressful or just as a practice, just as a really quick practice. So keep that in mind. Now, lots of times when we're thinking about our thinking um, and it's particularly like in meditation, we are realizing that we're thinking about what maybe what we're not doing well. Sometimes we think that we're not meditating correctly or we think you know, we're just not doing it right. And um, so that's something to be aware of. So attitudes can help with this. So a good attitude is patience and self-kindness. So the four on the left there are important to kind of call out. Acceptance, acceptance of those thoughts but without getting caught up in them, without um, and that's kind of the, the, the practice here is not getting swept away, especially by strong, strong energy of certain thoughts and, and then their associated emotions, but also not judging them. And that's kind of the basic practice. So sometimes when we notice ourselves in meditation, we can notice ourselves saying things like, oh, I'm feeling really restless or I'm bored or I have too many thoughts. And um, that can kind of get in the way, but all you really have to do is sort of bring that non-judgmental attitude and acceptance to that and say, okay, that's just the way it is. You know, we can't stop our mind from thinking, you know, it's just the natural state of our mind. It's always bringing up thoughts. And some of us have very, very active minds. And sometimes our thinking, there's lots and lots going on, right? in our busy day, in our busy lives. So there's just so many things um, kind of, you know, swirling around up there that capture our attention. Uh, today's um, program is really all about trying to notice that, be aware of that, and being be able to identify what thoughts are helpful, because we're not trying to stop thinking, but we're trying to manage those thoughts in a way so that we can notice what thoughts are helpful uh, and what thoughts are not so helpful. Now, also as a kind of a, a prelude, you know, why do we meditate? Well, a lot of us meditate because it's relaxing and it's a nice break, but meditation and mindfulness is really about being alert in the present moment to help awaken and be, be know what's going on, to see things clearly kind of that weather analogy to turn our attention inward to check out what's happening, right? So what's your intention as you sit to meditate? I've listed a few here. You've probably seen this before, but on the bottom, the last two, I just want to call out. One is to gain insight. And the kind of meditation that we do is called mindfulness meditation, or sometimes it's called insight meditation. And it's really all about having insight into what's happening in the mind um, and tuning into our thoughts is a great way to do that and it can help us be more aware of the repetitive thought patterns that we all have or sometimes they call them sticky thoughts um, and so to notice that there are these thoughts that automatically pop up these conditioned thought patterns that we've accumulated over our lives that automatically come up and sometimes trigger us uh, so that we react on autopilot. And the whole point of our meditation practice is so that we're aware of those. And then the last point, so that we can begin to calm our mind. So the calming relaxation part of it is very helpful. And so that we can think clearly. And, and I know we've, we've shown you this cartoon many times, but lots of times, 
we get caught up on autopilot and our mind is full of stuff. All the worries of the day, all the to-dos, all of the bill pays, all of the what the kids need, what the family needs, what we got to get done at work. It's a balancing act and that tends to clutter the mind. So our practice of meditation helps us not get rid of thoughts. I mean, the cartoon kind of implies that like the dog there, you know, we want to be like the dog. Uh, we want to, we, we want to have, we can't get rid of thoughts, but we can sort of let those thoughts settle down sort of like a, a snow globe. Like when you shake it up and there's all those, those snowflakes flying around, it's sort of like our thoughts flying around. Um, sometimes we call that monkey mind. I'm going to talk about that in a couple of minutes. But when we slow down and instead of focus on all those other things, usually during the day, we're multitasking. This is all about monotasking and letting all those things sort of drift down to the bottom so that we can see more clearly. We can be more awake and tuned in to what's going on. And that helps us gain the insight. So this next um, image, again, which I've shown before, really shows somebody in sitting in meditation. And, um, you know, that's just kind of a funny little cartoon to illustrate that we can't get rid of thinking. There's going to be all these different various um, random thoughts that come and go. They just pop up like computer pop ups, you know, um, you know, if we could if we had a little like a little control that. Um, actually, mindfulness is kind of like that little control uh, to, to kind of manage those thoughts in a way that's helpful to us. And by the way, when you get these slides, this is an active link on the bottom here. It takes you to a, uh, a thought meditation that I've got posted on our website, on our EFR website. But so Jack Kornfield, who's one of my favorite instructors, really talks about this wise relationship to thought. And what he says is that you might find yourself considering thinking as an adversary. The unwanted interruption to a good meditation. Um, but this is a misunderstanding. Thinking is natural. Our minds secrete thoughts like our bodies secrete enzymes. Just part of what the mind does. Thoughts are essential for us to communicate, to be creative and design things and write poetry and and all those creative, wonderful things that our minds help us do. Um, and to contemplate what we most value to get in touch with uh, our core values, right? But um, they can they can really kind of lead us astray. And so this next quote is attributed to him as well. In mindfulness training, we're not trying to stop thinking Rather, we're trying to cultivate a wise relationship with thoughts. This becomes especially important when we're dealing with thoughts or beliefs that are negative or undermining. And there's a saying, thoughts make a good servant, but a poor master. So think about that for a minute. You know, sometimes we have these underlying beliefs and thought patterns, as I said, that are well worn pathways in our brains that automatically come up, you know, things that we believe about ourselves and the world around us and that we're not even aware of. And um, he uses the quote from Mark Twain, uh, my life has been filled with terrible misfortunes, most of which never happened. You know, we project, you know, our mind takes us into rumination and we project and catastrophize about things that haven't even happened yet. So our mindfulness practice helps us with our thoughts that that really make um, our thoughts can be a good servant. We can master those. If we let our thoughts be the master, it really does kind of lead us lead us astray into all different kinds of directions. So today's first meditation is about thoughts. And uh, so we're going to do this kind of a, a, a basic thought meditation. We'll start with collecting our attention with our breathing and our body, and as we often do. 
but we'll become aware of thoughts and you'll see how that works. So um, the intro to this particular meditation is this, the ability to distinguish between thinking and awareness. Uh, to use a classic metaphor from consciousness studies, awareness is like the empty stage and thinking is one of the actors that trots out onto the stage along with seeing, hearing, tasting, and touching. When we're mindful, we watch thinking play out from the vantage of awareness. As we do, we begin to notice actually that thinking is there and it's, it's sort of fleeting. It's just sort of mental events coming and going. And we don't have to let it sort of control us. Okay, that's from another instructor by the name of Jeff Warren. So let's begin by simply, um, let's start by taking a, a couple of deep breaths. Um, you can close your eyes if you like. Sometimes it helps to close the eyes to turn inward. Or if you'd prefer, you can keep them slightly open with a downward gaze down in front of you. So breathing more slowly, breathing more deeply. On the inhale, you can stretch up your spine a little bit. And on the exhale, just imagine you're breathing out any tension, softening the body as you settle down into the chair. And do that a few more times just so that we get in touch with the breathing. Being aware of the in-breath and then the out-breath just letting the breath be natural and relaxed at this point. In and out. And let's set our attitude, the ideal meditative attitude for this is a sense of good natured affability in the way that we sit. So not uptight, and the basic instruction at this point is to focus your attention on the in and out breath. And so you might feel it at a spot like the nostrils or the chest or the belly. And you might choose one and see if you can commit to it in a light and friendly way. Staying focused on the gentle inflow and outflow of the breath. And just, just try this for a while. Some like to use a mental note to help pay attention. So saying to yourself, in and out, rising and falling at whatever pace works for you. Now, as we progress, it's almost inevitable that we'll forget the breath and find ourselves off thinking about something. You might have noticed this already. Thoughts can be ridiculously subtle. They come up underneath us and carry us away. Before we know it, we realize we've been fantasizing about something or lost in a train of thoughts. What do you default to? How does your mind get hijacked? The point is, there's nothing more normal in the world. The mind secretes thought the way the stomach secretes digestive enzymes. It's part of our natural functioning. The key, as always, is mindfulness. Being able to notice when this has happened so that we can catch our thoughts in the act. Each time we notice, we wake up. To help this, we might note thinking as it's happening and go right back to feeling the breath. 
Or we might even notice types of thoughts like well, there's a worry thought or a planning thought or a memory or a fantasy. You can label those as well. Let's do this for a moment or so, just observing thoughts and maybe labeling them as you're aware of them, not engaging with them, just labeling them. That's kind of the trick is we're not engaging with them, but sometimes we do get caught up and we get really kind of carried away. So um, we find ourselves lost in thought. And sometimes we think, well, I'm not doing it right if that happens. Like if you get completely carried away and down that rabbit hole of thinking, but when you notice that that's happened, that's actually this sort of magic moment, an opportunity to reconnect with presence. So it's a way to waken up, notice that you're lost, and then gently guide your attention back to your anchor, either the breath or the body, reconnecting with the present moment. And that practice that we do helps us in real life do that. So just noticing that now, being aware of maybe noticing what kinds of thoughts popped up for you, depending on what's going on. And when you feel ready, you can open your eyes as we begin to proceed back into the rest of the the webinar today, but when you do, see if you can tune in occasionally to your thinking process. Try to notice when it carries you away. And also be curious about the exact moment of waking up. What does it feel like to suddenly snap back into awareness in the moment to notice that you've been thinking? In this way, we become more present, more free, more available to life. So thank you for that practice with me. I hope you found that interesting. It's kind of interesting to, to look at our thoughts. The, the second meditation we do before we close is even kind of looking at a little bit of a deeper level of exploring what's underlying those thoughts. But here's a couple of quotes to ponder. We are not troubled by things, but by the opinions we have about things. And it's this idea that those opinions are all those thoughts that are coming up. There's commentary, there's opinions, there's judgments that we have about things that cross our paths, things that we like and we don't like. Um, and so the things that really stress us out are not the actual things themselves, but it's our thinking and our opinions and our beliefs about those things. And then the second quote, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. And that's from Viktor Frankl from Man's Search for Meaning. So, um, the more we practice again, the more we notice that there is this, we can tap into that space, even when there's almost like this automatic reaction that we have. Um, we notice the thought that pops up, the thought that maybe triggers us to react automatically. But I believe that with our mindfulness practice, it helps us tap into that space more easily so that we have this ability to choose our response. If we don't, this is what happens. The thoughts kind of pile up. We, we start that catastrophizing, uh, ruminating, and they just really kind of be, they're, they're just, that, that's when it gets sort of the snowball effect. We, we don't have any control over the thoughts. Now, another way uh, that is commonly talked about in mindfulness uh, 
instruction in classes is monkey mind. Maybe you can relate to this. Our thoughts are sort of like uh, monkeys, you know, flitting about um, very kind of high energy and jumping from tree to tree, branch to branch, and a lot of chatter going on, a lot of noise. Um, now this, uh, I'm going to read you again a, a, a brief little thing on how to handle thoughts in meditation, how to, how to handle that monkey mind um, so that it doesn't get out of control. And this is by Peter Russell. Indian teachings call it the monkey mind, that continual inner chatter going from one thought to another with hardly a pause. How can we stop it? Simply telling it to stop doesn't seem to help. We may succeed for a moment or two, but it's soon back taking us away in some other thought. In meditation, uh, rather, if meditation is about the mind becoming still, then the monkey mind would seem to be its biggest enemy. I've been caught in this myself at times when it seems impossible to stop thoughts in meditation and wish they weren't there. So how do we how do we handle thoughts in meditation? Actually, meditation is not about stopping thoughts. It's about not following them. This is really the key. Whereas in daily life, our attention wanders from one idea to another. In meditation, when you realize you've been caught in a thought, accept the fact. Don't judge or blame yourself. It happens, even to the most experienced meditators. Just pause the thought. Don't follow it any further. So pause it, don't follow it, let it go, and gently shift your attention back to your experience in the present moment. That's why it helps to come back to that anchor, whether it's the breath or the body or some other anchor that you've established. So that's the basic um, idea with this. And um, it's one way to think about our thinking uh, that, that is a little bit more helpful. And then we also realize that, that our thoughts are often quite interwoven with emotions. And that's where it can get us a little bit into trouble. Not that emotions are a bad thing, but sometimes our thoughts um, connect us with a high energy emotion or something that, that fuels us. And they kind of really go together. The thoughts can kind of fuel the emotions. The emotions fuel the thoughts. And before you know it, it's sort of like that they're all building up like in that, that image I showed you before. So this, this next meditation um, is from uh, an instructor by the name of Kara Lai. It's from the 10% Happier app. If you happen to have that, it's called Can't Stop Thinking. So, um, and again, as way of intro, uh, some think they can't meditate because they can't stop thinking. Um, but we can't turn off our brain. It's impossible to do that. And it's not the point of mindfulness anyway. A new way is that anytime there's a lot of thinking, there's usually some kind of emotion driving that thinking. And instead of focusing on the thoughts and what to do with them, we're going to turn towards what's underneath and that's what the meditation is about so let's do our second meditation today so again find a comfortable position take a moment to adjust so that you can be um, awake and alert as you do this but also nice and comfortable and relaxed so finding that balance again you can close the eyes or you can keep them slightly open it's up to you, whatever you're most comfortable with, but finding a comfortable position and a comfortable way to let the eyes rest, comfortable place to rest the hands and arms, and maybe taking a couple of deep breaths to start. Just really feeling the breath as it comes in, filling the body. And then releasing, let the out breath be long and slow, releasing and relaxing as you breathe out. And then just 
Let the breath resume to its natural, easy rhythm. And also feeling the body. Feel the body as it sits. Feeling the feet connecting you to the ground. Feeling the body being supported by the chair. And choose the breath or the body, or both if you like, they, they're connected of course, as an anchor. And let's stay with the anchor for a few moments, coming back whenever your attention has wandered. So you'll probably notice some thoughts, maybe a lot, or just a few, or not too many at all. If you're having a moment where your brain feels out of control and thinking up a storm, that's totally fine. Thoughts can be strong and alluring. They have a tendency to pull us into them. So when you notice you've been hanging out in the land of thinking, you can always touch back into your anchor to maintain a sense of presence, even if your thoughts continue to unfold. So let's just try this for a little while. Just start with the anchor, but then when you notice thoughts pulling you, just be aware of that and returning to your anchor. Noticing thoughts, they continue, coming back to the anchor, just like we did before. Now, see if you can get curious about what might be underlying these thoughts. Is there a mood or an emotion present that feels connected to the thinking? If it feels okay, direct your attention into the body and see if you can tell where these thoughts and emotions might be landing. You check out your belly, your chest, or your throat, and see what's there. Sometimes the jaw or your fists can get clenched. Is there anxiety or frustration or some other emotion? Sadness, fear? or something you can't quite put your finger on. Whatever you find, make some space, let it be there, both in your body and your mind. Allow the sensation to move or change or grow to express themselves in whatever way they need to. But bring a kind attention to whatever you find, the way you might care for a small child that's hurt or upset. Now, the thoughts may very well continue, and that's okay. That doesn't need to stop or change. We're actually using the thoughts as resources to connect us to a deeper level. So it's not a problem if they're there. So often, thoughts are an expression of a part of us that's yet to be expressed or paid enough attention to.
when we can connect to that part of, of us in an open, caring, and non-judgmental way, it can help address what's going on on the deeper level and bring attention and care where it's most needed. Remember, we're not trying to change our thoughts and feelings or make them go away. We're just trying to understand them a little more. If you'd like, you can drop in a question or two and see what arises. What is this really about? Or what do I want? Or what do I need right now to feel okay? We're connecting with these feelings, making some space for them. And if it feels overwhelming, we can come back to our anchor and breathe slowly. Now, you may get pulled back into the thoughts again over and over, and again, that's okay. That's how it works. Whenever you notice you've been lost in thought, it's an opportunity to pause and ask, where is this thinking coming from? Can I make some space for that? Then sense into your body and see what comes up. Meet it with kind permissive attention. And remember, as you go about your day, it's never wrong or bad to be thinking that wouldn't work, right? We really need our thinking because well, we do spend so much of our time thinking. So instead of fighting with the thoughts, at any moment of wakefulness, you can use thinking to understand a bit more about what's going on for you. So when you feel ready, start to bring your attention to the space around you. Maybe noticing any sounds in your environment. Gently opening your eyes if they're closed and reconnect with the world around you. And thanks, thanks for practicing with me. Maybe you noticed that monkey mind going on. Uh, maybe you noticed the change in the thoughts themselves and the pace of the thoughts or the, and being able to kind of notice what kinds of thoughts were happening. It's kind of interesting to, to sort of notice. So wonder what you thought of, of that before I move on and feel free to maybe either put into the chat or if you want to speak up, feel free to do that as well. Just unmute yourself. But this is a little different than our kind of standard, um, you know, the standard practice is when we focus on our breath or our body, when thoughts distract us, we just bring ourselves back. We reconnect, re-anchor ourselves. Um, this is different. This is really noticing a little bit more about what's happening with those thoughts, being curious about them, being open to what's going on with them, right? And in this way, I like to think of this as kind of taking the weight off your mind. Because again, if we let those thoughts sort of have that mind of their own, uh, they do, they can tend to build up, they can tend to um, take on a life of their own. So any, any thoughts or comments? Um, love to hear what you thought about that. It's got a couple minutes before we close. Um, got a couple more things to show you and resources to tell you about. Um, but here's your challenge, you know? So this is, uh, I'm not sure how your practice has been going, but I'll, I'll make this challenge for you to, and just try it for two weeks. So you have informal practice. Now, again, informal practice simply means taking note of doing a routine task 
and being mindful while you're doing it. That could be brushing your teeth or washing your hands or doing the dishes, or it could be eating mindfully or walking mindfully, doing some gentle stretches. Those are all good informal practices. So try to do that daily. And then the formal practice, so sitting, um, you know, really taking a moment to formally sit and meditate, whether it's guided or not, um, try to do that daily-ish, five, six days a week if you can. And anywhere from three to 12 minutes. So 12 minutes is optimal. At least three minutes will qualify, okay? So um, that's your challenge for the next couple of weeks. And if you can keep it going, that's really the important part. That's really what it's all about. Maybe try to keep it going until our next mindfulness refresher in July. Now, um, I do have a new class coming up. This also, um, just to, if you didn't hear this in the beginning, today's class uh, qualifies for a Know Your Numbers credit um, under the personal choice activities. And this four-week class called Relax, Focus, De-Stress, and Connect, which is starting July 11th and going on four consecutive Thursdays from 12 to 12.50. They all, each one of those counts. Now you can get up to two. OK, so each uh, one would count um, and you can join one or you can join two or all four, whatever you like. Um, but as you can see, each week has a different focus. So if you register for this on LMS. Um, you'll get the link once you do that. And again, just feel free to join all four. If you can't attend, I will be um, recording them as well and, and posting them on our Thrive site. So. Just wanted you to know about that. Okay, so um, let's see what's next. Other resources to support your practice. We have on our EFR website, we've got a whole page of guided meditations. There's an active link there. There's an, new, there's an app, if you haven't already tried that, called the M Life app, or sometimes it's called eMindful. It's on that Carol on Wellbeing sets the same uh, web address. There's other apps that are fine. Uh, feel free. Insight Timer is wonderful. Lots of, lots and lots of thousands, in fact, of free meditations. Healthy Minds is another good one that I found. Also 10% Happier. 10% Happier does have a charge. The other two do not. Uh, the M Life does not have a charge either. And this class, which you know about, obviously, you're here today, but to these throughout the year, so every month. And then the YouTube where I post all the recordings, there's a whole lot of different playlists there on different mindful topics. So uh, keep that in mind. And we're still doing the phone meditations. It would be nice if you could join any of these live meditations Monday through Friday. I do most of them, but I do have a colleague, Tom, who helps on Fridays. And um, and then also in the blue box here, there's a separate number that are three pre-recorded. So just if you want to call that number anytime and just choose one of those, they're always available as well. And I'll leave you with this, John Kabat-Zinn. Mindfulness is about being fully awake in our lives. It's about perceiving the exquisite vividness of each moment. And we also gain immediate access to our own powerful inner resources for insight, transformation and healing. So I thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, any last questions? Well, I'll, um, I'll be on for a couple minutes more. But as I said, this is being recorded. Um, so I'll send out the recording as well as the slides. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be on for a couple more minutes or feel free to reach out to me on email. And um, and again, thanks for joining me and hope you're having a good start to summer. Enjoying this nice, beautiful weather and um, hope you can come again. You're more than welcome. Thanks for being here today.